Good morning. Another bright, hot, sunny day. Now, I'm only kidding. It's, it's one degree this morning. It's January the 22nd. I still haven't had a birdie this year, so we're going to try and make a birdie today. Now, while I'm trolling around here in the winter, it's been difficult making videos. You know, we had a month of strong wind, we had a month of rain, now we've got bitter cold and my body doesn't work. And I kind of like mentioned this and so I said, why don't you do what's in the bag and why? Now I've done what's in the bag before and I, I find it hard to take it seriously. So today I'm going to try and take it seriously. But to start with, I'll tell you what isn't in the bag and why. Now over Christmas and New Year, I had a go with some larger headed irons. I felt like I could use with a bigger sweet spot and a little bit of help. Well, they didn't make it to the bag, and I'll tell you why. But let's get on that tee and see if we can make some birdies today. Well, there's no birdies over there. Now the idea of having a bigger headed iron and a bigger sweet spot, it sounds really good on paper, but in reality the feedback you get from the club is a bit vague. You don't know what part of the club face that you've hit. And because these clubs tend to be made of harder materials, to me it felt like every shot was with a top flight rock. You know, the sound and the feel and the vibration coming back and that vagueness just didn't suit me. <laughs> Perhaps I was trying too hard to get over that tree. But the other problem with the modern Help You Golf Club is the loft. Now it doesn't really matter in the middle of the set if you take an iron that's got a 7 stamped on the bottom of it when it really should have a 6 or even a 5. But it's at the ends of the set, the long irons and the short irons, where there's a problem. That's another reason why they didn't get in my bag. You know, if you accept that a one iron is 15 degrees, and it is, a one iron is the same as your three wood, and a two iron is 18 degrees, a three iron is 21 degrees, quite a lot of these sets have got four irons, which are stronger than 20 degrees. Now if I gave you a two iron and said, put that in the bag, play with that, you'd say, I can't play with a two iron, Simon, I'm not good enough. And yet you're, you're buying a set of irons where the four iron is a two iron. The worst I've seen was a five iron that was 20 degrees. So the five iron was stronger than a three iron. How dumb is that? Got a bit of the low pulls this morning. I think my grip's a fraction strong. Plus I'm cold, my, my hands are frozen already. Now at the other end of the scale, the pitching wedge in the set I tried was 44 degrees. But what's the strongest pitching wedge out there on the market right now? 42, 40, no it's 38. That's a bloody eight iron. A bloody eight iron for a pitching wedge. That's just bananas. Mm. 
Yeah, it's not good this morning, I'm too cold. Went to the range last night and it was really, really good. But that's when you're warm and you're hitting ball after ball after ball after ball. So what does it matter what number's on the bottom of your club? So let's say that you buy this set of irons, which is basically a, a three iron to an eight iron. Well, then you've got to buy a nine iron and a wedge and a gap wedge and a sand wedge. And that's what these cranked loft sets are all about. Money, extracting as much money out of you as possible. And I'll tell you another reason why they do things, to extract money out of you. So if you roll the clock back, a set of forged irons would cost you, say, £500 for three iron to sand wedge. A set of cast irons would cost you £300 to £350 for three iron to sand wedge. So you got a full set, almost 40% uh, cheaper. Now the modern sort of game improver iron is so complex, so many parts all welded together, that you're finding a set of forged irons now costs you a thousand to eleven hundred pounds and a set of these game improver irons costs you a thousand to eleven hundred pounds some of them not all granted some of them so you're paying a fortune for them because they they're, they're so labor intensive you've got a frame you've got a hosel you've got a face these are all welded together they slap a bit of tungsten in they put some plasticized uh, foam, rubber sort of stuff in there. And do you know what that's for? It's not speed foam. What it does is it alters the vibration and the sound and the feel because without it, the clubs would feel shite. A sound shite. That's the truth. So now you know what I haven't got. So what have I got? These are the Mizuno MP18 MMCs stands for multi-material construction. It basically means it's a forged blade, ever so slightly cavity back to give you a little bit of help. They put a little piece of titanium in here, so they remove some steel and they put a piece of titanium in. So that makes the sweet spot a tiny bit bigger. Then they put a piece of tungsten in the toe, which helps with MOI on when you're hitting the ball towards the toe. How much it helps, I don't honestly know. I mean, that's the manufacturer's blurb. But I play them because they feel great. And they're more or less traditional lofts. The four iron is 22. I had to remember there. Pitching wedge is 46. Now, it's very difficult to find a set now where the pitching wedge is a traditional 24 and the pitching wedge is a traditional sort of like 48. But a lot of the loft is to do with the ball flight. So if you've got a proper traditional blade, the ball doesn't go very high. So they tend to have that traditional loft. These are designed to go a little bit higher. So they've got a slightly stronger loft. But they're not stupid strong lofts. And that's what I like about them. The other thing with these is if I hit it one one groove low or one groove high or a little right or a little left I can actually feel it I get the feedback I get information from this club head that I simply don't get with a cast oversized super high sweet spot iron plus they feel you know they feel great when you hit a pro v1 oh christ
yeah, very cold, very stiff this morning. The exact opposite of the range. Now, I'm not going to kid you. Those irons have got a serious performance drop off if you don't find the middle. But when you do, oh boy. Yeah, I think I need to come out here without the camera. I was going to film tomorrow, Sunday, and I'm just, just not going to bother. Well, after another semi-knife, this is not the place to be. But I did it last week, so I got every chance of doing it this week. Yep. Yeah, take the flag out. So that's the irons done. Forged, good feel, good sound good vibration, a little bit of technology. Why do they call it technology? It's lumps of different types of metal. Some metals are lighter, some metals are heavier, and you move the weight around in the head a little bit to make it slightly more forgiving. So for me, that's good. Now I can hit a proper blade, but today I most certainly couldn't. Now back in 2002, I dropped the three iron out of my set and I replaced it with a seven wood. Now that was great because two words I could never apply to my three iron was high and hook. So all of a sudden I've got a club now that I can hit over the top of oak trees with a draw, as well as keep the ball down. The only problem with the seven wood was over time is that I felt that into the wind it would just stall. So you take your seven wood and it only goes as far as your six iron. So when it was time for clubs to be changed out, and that seven wood was pretty beaten up. I got a hybrid instead. This is a um, Mizuno JPX 850, 19 degrees, regular flex shaft. Didn't mention the shaft in the irons, it's the Nippon 105 stiff. So it seems a bit strange that I got a regular in this. Now I think this overall is a hair better than the seven wood, except there are times when I wish I could hit it really up there and I just can't with this. But uh, let's give it a go now. Oh God, why am I doing this? Christ, Simon, you're too old for that. Well, that's the first shot I've hit. So you can see that even on a crap day like this, it suits me. It's in that uh, Mizuno blue, you know, the color that everybody seems to hate. But I quite like it. Well, I can see the top of the flag, even though the camera can't. This is why I always play to get up on top, really. The hybrid just isn't long enough. Although I've hit the green. So, uh, job done. But it's not always that easy when you can't see the green surface. Oh, what? Oh, brother. Right, Fairway Woods. Mizuno ST200s. I finally decided a couple of years ago I needed a change. And uh, I got fitted for these. They're in a regular shaft. I was halfway between regular and stiff, really, so I could have gone either way. Um, the slightly deeper face than normal. Some fairway woods are very shallow. These are a slightly deeper face. They're easy to hit. They sound good. They feel good.
Yeah, I hit the tee shot too far to the right and it holds up in the rough. But I got a decent lie. This is a tug though. I don't know whether it was the mud or the way I was set up to the ball, but that's gone across the path down the left. Nasty. Yeah, mud ball cost me there. Big hook. Fourteen may well be stroke eight, and therefore one of the more difficult holes. But I really dislike bogey in this one. You know, it's not a hole that you're hitting driver off, so I should par it every time, really. Right, driver. Mizuno ST200. When they first came out, I think they were 349 quid. Places were discounting them down to 329. One year later, I bought mine, still in the wrappers. 225. People don't buy them. And there's always this story that, oh, Mizuno drivers are crap. How can probably the best iron maker in the world make a crap driver? Or is it because they don't pay people millions of dollars to put these in their bag and they're uncool because none of the big pros have got them? I think that's your answer. If I'd bet the house on which hole I'd make my first birdie in 2022, it would not be 15. It'd be something like 13 or 10, or even the 18th, but not 15. The duck has been broken. Yes! Now, I remember when this driver came out, I'd seen all the pros on YouTube testing it, and it, was, it came out as you know, two or three yards shorter than some of the other drivers on the market do you think being 165 yards from the green instead of 168 yards from the green is really going to change your game out in the real world us we need a little bit of backspin and a little bit of forgiveness James Robinson took this driver and three others out on the golf course and out in the real world he declared the Mizuno ST200 the best driver so which one did he put in the bag? Well, it wasn't the Mizuno. It was either the Epic or the Sim. I can't remember which, and I'm not bothered. But he didn't put this in the bag because this isn't trendy. Because outside of Japan, nobody gets paid to use this. And that's why they're not popular. But the idea that uh, the number of times I've seen, oh, Mizuno make crap drivers, it makes my blood boil because you're talking crap. That was right out the hill, heel, because that was right out the heel, because my swing's crap. It's about two degrees centigrade today, and I'm cold and stiff, but it's still gone. It's still in play.
I had visions there of uh, two birdies on the trot. Right, the business end, the putter. It's a Mizuno Domino. Double eight, double one. It's sort of like a toe balanced. It's not fully down, but it's most of the way down. Uh, bought it in 1990, 35 pounds. So I suppose that was a lot of money back then. Um, never thought of changing it. You know, if I'm missing holes, it's not this thing, it's me. And I don't follow the trend that I need a 500 pound Scotty in my bag. I think that'll be a waste of money. It's not gonna make any difference to my game. It's 35 inches. If you were fitting me for a putter, you would not sell me this putter because it is too long for a short arse like me. And the number of pros who've said that I need to get a shorter putter, they might actually be right, but I do okay with it. Um, never gonna change it. I do have another putter at home. I've got a forged Mizuno putter. It's about the same age, maybe even a bit older, and it's a lot heavier. So I tend to use that when the greens are slow. So strictly speaking, I should be using it now. Right, my golf equipment suits me. It probably won't suit you because we're all different. We all want different things. So when you're choosing golf gear, does it look good? Does it look good to your eye? If you've got a big chunky monkey club where the sole is sticking out the back of the club and there's a thick top line and it looks ugly to you, you're not gonna hit it well because in here you already hate it. Does it feel good? Does it sound good? Does the vibration that you get from impact, does it tell you what you need to know about impact and what possible mistake you've made? Can you hit it straight? Does it go where you want it to go? Does it go the distance you want it to go? You know, there's, there's no point picking clubs that you, you can't hit and therefore you don't get distance out of. Can you afford it? Can you actually afford this 1,100 pound set of irons and a set of three woods that costs you another 900 pounds? Can you actually afford that? And the last and the most important thing is, when you buy something new, can you get it in the house without your wife finding out? I'm going to tear up a potato here because of the water. I don't tend to go with Pro-V ones unless I'm really on it. And as you've seen, I'm not on it in this cold. So uh, I'll see you in the next one. I'm playing tomorrow. I may dra drag the camera out, but tomorrow is the last time I'm going off the ninth tee. After that, I'm going to the first tee and playing the full 18. So I'm not going to record tomorrow. So it'll be the 30th of Jan before I record again. Ta-ra. I do like this hybrid. Well, at least one of my strengths is lag putting. I don't actually practice it. It's just years and years of feel. Nothing more to it than that. 